What I want you to remember is a right bundle branch block, is this an acute process or is this a chronic process that's been going on? For example, acute process being a pulmonary embolism and then a chronic process being something like COPD. And so the reason that we get a right bundle branch block in both of these different conditions, and most of the time with a right bundle branch block is because there is a very, very high increase in pulmonary pressures. So pulmonic pressures. So what usually ends up happening, let's take the acute case in a pulmonary embolism, we have this massive block, maybe here or even here, and this drives pressure up, right? The right ventricle now has to overcome a very, very high pressure in order to push blood further along the, I guess, those cardiac flow cycle, right? So from the right ventricle into the pulmonary arteries, it now has to overcome this surge in pressure, either in this case, an acute process because of a pulmonary embolism. And what ends up happening, just like any muscle, when you put stress on a muscle, it's going to grow, it's going to hypertrophy. So all of this gets much, 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 much larger. And as a result, we get more electrical activity over there because we have more cardiac muscle contracting and being stimulated, right? And so that usually results in that right bundle branch block pattern. We get this overcrowding of really transient quick muscle growth that kind of overcrowds the cardiac conduction system when we get that right bundle branch block. Now let's counter that and let's say the acute process was a pulmonary embolism. Let's say this chronic COPD or they just have high pulmonary pressures that have been ongoing for a long time. That's going to slowly develop a right bundle branch block over time because the right ventricle now has to overcome the high pulmonary pressures from emphysema and chronic bronchitis. 